A rocket engine nozzle is a propelling nozzle usually of the de Laval type used in a rocket engine to expand and accelerate the combustion gases produced by burning propellants so that the exhaust gases exit the nozzle at hypersonic velocities. Simply, the rocket pumps and a combustion chamber generates high pressure, a few hundred atmospheres. The nozzle turns the static high-pressure high-temperature gas into rapidly moving gas at near ambient pressure. History The de Laval nozzle was originally developed in the 19th century by Gustave de Laval for use in steam turbines. It was first used in an early rocket engine developed by Robert Goddard, one of the fathers of modern rocketry. It has since been used in almost all rocket engines, including Walter Thiel's implementation, which made possible Germany's V-2 rocket. Atmospheric use The optimal size of a rocket engine nozzle to be used within the atmosphere is achieved when the exit pressure equals ambient atmospheric pressure, which decreases with altitude. For rockets traveling from the Earth to orbit, a simple nozzle design is only optimal at one altitude, losing efficiency and wasting fuel at other altitudes. Just past the throat, the pressure of the gas is higher than ambient pressure and needs to be lowered between the throat and the nozzle exit by expansion. If the pressure of the jet leaving the nozzle exit is still above ambient pressure, then a nozzle is said to be «underexpanded». If the jet is below ambient pressure, then it is «overexpanded». Slight overexpansion causes a slight reduction in efficiency, but otherwise does little harm. However, if the exit pressure is less than approximately 40% that of ambient, then «flow separation» occurs. This can cause jet instabilities that can cause damage to the nozzle or simply cause control difficulties of the vehicle or the engine. In some cases it is desirable for reliability and safety reasons to ignite a rocket engine on the ground that will be used all the way to orbit. For optimal liftoff performance, the pressure of the gases exiting nozzle should be at sea level pressure. However, if a rocket engine is primarily designed for use at high altitudes and is only providing additional thrust to another first stage engine during liftoff in a multi-stage design, then designers will usually opt for an overexpanded nozzle at sea level design, making it more efficient at higher altitudes where the ambient pressure is lower. This was the technique employed on the Space Shuttle's main engines, which spent most of their power trajectory in near vacuum, while the shuttle's two solid rocket boosters provided the majority of the liftoff thrust. Vacuum <inaudible> 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 use <inaudible> 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 For nozzles that are used in vacuum or at very high altitude, it is impossible to match ambient pressure, rather, nozzles with larger area ratio are usually more efficient. However, a very long nozzle has significant mass, a drawback in and of itself. A length that optimizes overall vehicle performance typically has to be found. Additionally, as the temperature of the gas in the nozzle decreases, some components of the exhaust gases such as water vapor from the combustion process may condense or even freeze. This is highly undesirable and needs to be avoided. Magnetic nozzles have been proposed for some types of propulsion for example VASIMR, in which the flow of plasma or ions are directed by magnetic fields instead of walls made of solid materials. These can be advantageous, since a magnetic field itself cannot melt, and the plasma temperatures can reach millions of kelvins. However, there are often thermal design challenges presented by the coils themselves, particularly if superconducting coils are used to form the throat and expansion fields. <laughs> One-dimensional analysis of gas flow in rocket engine nozzles The analysis of gas flow through de Laval nozzles involves a number of concepts and simplifying assumptions. The combustion gas is assumed to be an ideal gas. The gas flow is isentropic i.e., at constant entropy, as the result of the assumption of non-viscous fluid, an adiabatic process. The gas flow is constant i.e., steady during the period of the propellant burn. 
The gas flow is non-turbulent and axisymmetric from gas inlet to exhaust gas exit i.e., along the nozzle's axis of symmetry. The flow behavior is compressible since the fluid is a gas, as the combustion gas enters the rocket nozzle, it is traveling at subsonic velocities. As the throat constricts, the gas is forced to accelerate until at the nozzle throat, where the cross-sectional area is the least, the linear velocity becomes sonic. From the throat the cross-sectional area then increases, the gas expands and the linear velocity becomes progressively more supersonic. The linear velocity of the exiting exhaust gases can be calculated using the following equation V E equals T R M 2 gamma gamma minus 1 1 minus P E P gamma minus 1 gamma Display style V underscore E equals SQRT, frac T R M C D O T, frac two, gamma, gamma minus one, C D O T, left one, left frac P underscore E P, right, carrot, frac gamma minus one, gamma, right. Some typical values of the exhaust gas velocity V for rocket engines burning various propellants are 1.7 to 2.9 kilometers per second, 3800 to 6500 miles per hour for liquid monopropellants. 2.9 to 4 5 kilometers per second, 6500 to 10100 miles per hour for liquid bipropellants. 2.1 to 3.2 kilometers per second, 4700 to 7200 miles per hour for solid propellants as a note of interest. V is sometimes referred to as the ideal exhaust gas velocity because it based on the assumption that the exhaust gas behaves as an ideal gas. As an example calculation using the above equation, assume that the propellant combustion gases are at an absolute pressure entering the nozzle of P Topic: 7.0 MPa and exit the rocket exhaust at an absolute pressure of PE 0 1 MPa at an absolute temperature of T. Topic: 3500 K with an isentropic expansion factor of gamma 1 22 and a molar mass of m. Topic: 22 kilograms per kilo mole. Using those values in the above equation yields an exhaust velocity v. 2,802 meters per second or 2.80 kilometers per second, which is consistent with above typical values. The technical literature can be very confusing because many authors fail to explain whether they are using the universal gas law constant R which applies to any ideal gas or whether they are using the gas law constant R's which only applies to a specific individual gas. The relationship between the two constants is R's. Equals R, M, where R is the universal gas constant, and M is the molar mass of the gas. Equals Topic: Specific impulse equals thrust is the force that moves a rocket through the air or space. Thrust is generated by the propulsion system of the rocket through the application of Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. A gas or working fluid is accelerated out the rear of the rocket engine nozzle, and the rocket is accelerated in the opposite direction. The thrust of a rocket engine nozzle can be defined as F equals M V E plus P E minus P O A E equals M V E plus P E minus P O 
M A E display style begin aligned F and equals dot M V underscore text E plus left P underscore text E P underscore text O right or underscore E two P T and equals dot M left V underscore text E plus left frac P underscore text E P underscore text O dot M right or underscore text E right end aligned and for perfectly expanded nozzles this reduces to F equals M V E Q Display style f equals dot m v underscore text e q. The specific impulse I S P display style i underscore text S P is the ratio of the thrust produced to the weight flow of the propellants. It is a measure of the fuel efficiency of a rocket engine. In English engineering units, it can be obtained as i S P equals f m g o equals M V EQ M G O equals V EQ G O Display style I underscore text SP equals frac F dot M G underscore text O equals frac dot M V underscore text EQ dot M G underscore text O equals frac V underscore text EQ G underscore text O In certain cases, where P E Display style P underscore text E equals P O display style p underscore text o. The formula becomes i s p equals f m g o equals m v e m g o equals v E G O displays Tyli underscore text SP equals frac F dot M G underscore text O equals frac dot M V underscore text E dot M G underscore text O equals frac V underscore text E G underscore text O In cases where this may not be so, since for a rocket nozzle P E Display style p underscore text e is proportional to m. Display style dot m. It is possible to define a constant quantity that is the vacuum i s p v a c. Display style i underscore text s p v a c for any given engine. Thus, i s p v a c equals V E G O plus P E A E M G O Display style I underscore text SP VAC equals frac V underscore text E G underscore text O plus frac P underscore text E A underscore text E dot M G underscore text O and hence F equals I SP VAC G O M minus A E P O display style f equals i underscore text s p v a c g underscore text o dot m r underscore text e p underscore text o, which is simply the vacuum thrust minus the force of the ambient atmospheric pressure acting over the exit plane. Essentially, then, for rocket nozzles, the ambient pressure acting on the engine cancels except over the exit plane of the rocket engine in a rearward direction, while the exhaust jet generates forward thrust. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Aerostatic back pressure and optimal expansion. As the gas travels down the expansion part of the nozzle, the pressure and temperature decrease, while the speed of the gas increases. 
The supersonic nature of the exhaust jet means that the pressure of the exhaust can be significantly different from ambient pressure. The outside air is unable to equalize the pressure upstream due to the very high jet velocity. Therefore, for supersonic nozzles, it is actually possible for the pressure of the gas exiting the nozzle to be significantly below or very greatly above ambient pressure. If the exit pressure is too low, then the jet can separate from the nozzle. This is often unstable, and the jet will generally cause large off-axis thrusts and may mechanically damage the nozzle. This separation generally occurs if the exit pressure drops below roughly 30 to 45% of ambient, but separation may be delayed to far lower pressures if the nozzle is designed to increase the pressure at the rim, as is achieved with the SSME 1 to 2 psi at 15 psi ambient. In addition, as the rocket engine starts up or throttles, the chamber pressure varies, and this generates different levels of efficiency. At low chamber pressures, the engine is almost inevitably going to be grossly overexpanded. Topic: Optimal shape. The ratio of the area of the narrowest part of the nozzle to the exit plane area is mainly what determines how efficiently the expansion of the exhaust gases is converted into linear velocity, the exhaust velocity, and therefore the thrust of the rocket engine. The gas properties have an effect as well. The shape of the nozzle also modestly affects how efficiently the expansion of the exhaust gases is converted into linear motion. The simplest nozzle shape has a approximately 15 degrees cone half angle, which is about 98% efficient. Smaller angles give very slightly higher efficiency, larger angles give lower efficiency. More complex shapes of revolution are frequently used, such as bell nozzles or parabolic shapes. These give perhaps 1% higher efficiency than the cone nozzle and can be shorter and lighter. They are widely used on launch vehicles and other rockets where weight is at a premium. They are, of course, harder to fabricate, so are typically more costly. There is also a theoretically optimal nozzle shape for maximal exhaust speed. However, a shorter bell shape is typically used, which gives better overall performance due to its much lower weight, shorter length, lower drag losses, and only very marginally lower exhaust speed. Other design aspects affect the efficiency of a rocket nozzle. The nozzle's throat should have a smooth radius. The internal angle that narrows to the throat also has an effect on the overall efficiency, but this is small. The exit angle of the nozzle needs to be as small as possible about 12 degrees in order to minimize the chances of separation problems at low exit pressures. <laughs> <laughs> Advanced designs A number of more sophisticated designs have been proposed for altitude compensation and other uses. Nozzles with an atmospheric boundary include Expansion deflection nozzle Plug nozzle Aerospike Single expansion ramp nozzle SERN, a linear expansion nozzle, where the gas pressure transfers work only on one side and which could be described as a single-sided aerospike nozzle, each of these allows the supersonic flow to adapt to the ambient pressure by expanding or contracting, thereby changing the exit ratio so that it is at or near optimal exit pressure for the corresponding altitude. The plug and aerospike nozzles are very similar in that they are radial in flow designs but plug nozzles feature a solid center body sometimes truncated and aerospike nozzles have a «base bleed» of gases to simulate a solid center body. ED nozzles are radial out-flow nozzles with the flow deflected by a center pintle. Controlled flow separation nozzles include Expanding nozzle Bell nozzles with a removable insert Stepped nozzles, or dual bell nozzles, these are generally very similar to bell nozzles but include an insert or mechanism by which the exit area ratio can be increased as ambient pressure is reduced. Dual mode nozzles include Dual expander nozzle Dual throat nozzle, these have either two throats or two thrust chambers with corresponding throats. The central throat is of a standard design and is surrounded by an annular throat, which exhausts gases from the same dual throat or a separate dual expander thrust chamber. Both throats would, in either case, discharge into a bell nozzle. 
At higher altitudes, where the ambient pressure is lower, the central nozzle would be shut off, reducing the throat area and thereby increasing the nozzle area ratio. These designs require additional complexity, but an advantage of having two thrust chambers is that they can be configured to burn different propellants or different fuel mixture ratios. Similarly, Aerojet has also designed a nozzle called the thrust augmented nozzle, which injects propellant and oxidizer directly into the nozzle section for combustion, allowing larger area ratio nozzles to be used deeper in an atmosphere than they would without augmentation due to effects of flow separation. They would again allow multiple propellants to be used such as RP1, further increasing thrust. Liquid injection thrust vectoring nozzles are another advanced design that allow pitch and yaw control from UN gimbaled nozzles. India's PSLV calls its design, "...secondary injection thrust vector control system". Strontium perchlorate is injected through various fluid paths in the nozzle to achieve the desired control. Some ICBMs and boosters, such as the Titan IIIC and Minuteman II, use similar designs. See also Choked flow, when a gas velocity reaches the speed of sound in the gas as it flows through a restriction De Laval nozzle, a convergent-divergent nozzle designed to produce supersonic speeds Dual thrust rocket motors Giovanni Battista Venturi Jet engine – engines propelled by jets including rockets Multistage rocket NK-33 Russian rocket engine Pulse jet engine Pulsed rocket motor Reaction engine Skylon – a single stage to orbit spaceplane powered by hybrid air breathing, internal oxygen engine reaction engine Sabre Rocket, rocket vehicles Rocket engines, used to propel rocket vehicles SERN, single expansion ramp nozzle, a non-axisymmetric aerospike Shock diamonds, the visible bands formed in the exhaust of rocket engines Solid fuel rocket Spacecraft propulsion Specific impulse, a measure of exhaust speed Staged combustion cycle rocket, a type of rocket engine Venturi effect <laughs>